Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Spring Meadow Wing. I like this place, too. It's, it's cozy, the food's great, the people are great. Please tip your servers uh, and have a great time tonight. Uh, I'd like to open up with a prayer it, with the, a, uh, the uh, chaplain for the uh, Lakewood Police Department, Robert Cartwright. Let us pray. God of our fathers, maker of heaven and earth. Since our inception, Lord, we have been the greatest country in the world up until four years ago. We have lost our status. We are in debt up to our necks. We have trouble all throughout the country. Our troops are being killed for people that don't even like us. Lord, as we meet here tonight to bring out these problems and troubles and try to change them, we pray that you'll fill us with your compassion and your spirit. And may we, in this small group, change as much as we can. In his name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you'd all rise for a uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay, let's get this rolling here. I did promise a special announcement. We're going to do that right now. Uh, hope it's not a shock for many. But I, 30, uh, 35 months ago, I stepped out onto this uh, little stage here and uh, emceed my first meeting. And it's been a wild ride, a lot of fun. Uh, but it's time that we got some new, uh, some fresh blood in here. I'm going to be resigning as of tonight. Yay! <laughs> About time! <laughs> now, now we'll really grow this group. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I've been searching around for uh, someone who's uh, a suitable uh, leader, who's someone who's strong. Uh, someone who's organized, someone who's hardworking, and I uh, and is willing to do the work. And I believe I found that person in uh, Joellen Arabito. With real leadership skills. <laughs> so, on special election, uh, uh, voting members, please. Uh, if if anybody would like to challenge uh, Joellen for this thankless job. <laughs> No? Okay, all in favor of Joellen becoming the next president of the East Jersey Tea Party, please raise your hand. All opposed? Never put your hand down. He's voted twice. Okay, congratulations, Joellen. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd love to thank Dan because he was a, an inspiration to all of us and is an inspiration to all of us. He's not leaving us. In fact, he will be Shucks. critiquing me each month. So um, please, let's give a hand for Dan. For all his all right. Thank you. Dan. Dan, yeah. tell us the truth. No applause. Throw money, right? Yeah. Throw yeah. money. Yeah. And um, I do no, humbly you. accept this position, but I want to make sure it's understood this is not my club. This is our club. We are the Tea Party of New Jersey, and we are strong, but we're going to get stronger. We have a mission, and that mission is to restore America back to its glory back to the Constitution, to make sure that your children and your grandchildren have something that they can pledge to on a monthly basis, a daily basis, and not feel like their country has slipped away. That's our duty as Americans. So it's our club. I expect everybody to participate. Dan couldn't do it alone. I can't do it alone. It's us. So thank you all. 
Dan left out one part. If everybody wouldn't mind singing America the Beautiful with me. Okay? <clears throat> oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for with us right now. One from Ocean County, one from Monmouth County. We have with us Mayor, but also um, County Clerk Claire French of Wall Township and County Clerk of Ocean Township Scott. Scott, I'm Italian and I always mess up your name. Help me out here. Carla Bella. <laughs> so they're going to come up and help us try to get involved within our own towns so that we can be productive Americans. Claire and Scott, come on up. I'm sorry, they both gave me bios, but they have they are they are really truly overachievers. <laughs> They really are, both of them. So I'm going to let them give the, themselves their brief bio. All right. Well, um, my name is Claire French, and this is my town, Wall Township. Um, I would like to say as far as politics goes, um, about 40 years ago I said, well, let's see, I don't have any particular skill, no particular education, no trade, so I think I'll go into politics. <laughs> so um, what happened was I was just like you. I believed in something in my town that didn't seem to be the governing body agreed on. So I got involved, and that's how you start. So when the, the best way to start is to be a county committee person, and tonight you're going to hear a lot of the details on how you go about that. But I can tell you that when you are a county committee person called a district leader or a municipal um, committee member, it makes all the difference in the world in politics. First of all, locally, you get a chance to pick the candidates that run in your town. You get to know your own neighbors and how they feel about the important issues. You get an opportunity to educate them about what you think is important in your town. You get to vote on your county leaders. You get a voice in your county. You have an opportunity to be respected by them because they know who you are and that you represent the party and you represent a district. Now a district could be up to about a thousand people before it splits into another district. Uh, and in my town we have over 30 districts already. In some towns there's only one. I can tell you that when it comes to Washington, when it comes to the state of New Jersey, when you represent county committee, believe me, they pay attention. When it's an opportunity to open a door that in the past you might not have had an opportunity to, to open because you're not only representing yourself, your neighborhood, but your party. And it, believe me, it does make a difference. Now. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, Scott and I. We're constitutional officers, and that means that the uh, Constitution of the state of New Jersey requires that there be a county clerk, that there be a surrogate, and that there be a sheriff. We all run for office, and of course our terms are five years, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing, because we just focus on our work. We don't have to always be running around trying to raise money to, to run our election. Um, I just finished my um, election last year for um, my fourth five-year term, 
And um, county clerk, you're a, it's a bully pulpit because you first of all, we do recording, all the land records. We do the passport office. I also have an uh, archives department. I have an office of records management. And I'm clerk of elections. And as clerk of elections, we prepare the ballot for you. We, and I can tell you that there's a lot that goes into the preparation of the ballot, and there's a lot of discretion that Scott and I have when it comes to that design. It's very important for you to take, take an interest in what order the ballot is in. Uh, for instance, if you run for district leader, county committee, it's going to be important to you that the party picks you in case there's competition, in case um, you want to run in your district but uh, there's already somebody there, but maybe they're not doing their job. You want to be the one that gets elected to that position. Um, I think at that point, I'd like to maybe turn it over to Scott to tell you a little bit about what the legal requirements are for county committee. Scott? Thank you, Claire. If you live in Monmouth, which I know some of you do, you're very fortunate to have this young lady as your county clerk. Um, she's a wonderful elected official and cares about the people as you all do. Um, I wish Joe Ellen would have told me you were going to have this big transition in leadership because as uh, elected officials, you know what we love to do, we love to bring the certificates and we could have brought a certificate to congratulate you for your efforts and, and for her, her new presidency, so we'll have to come back and do that. And I promise I won't be uh, Senator Paul this time. As I said, your former president, I remember when I, if those of you who were here a year and a half ago, when I came to speak to you about different election issues, I was going on and on and on. He goes, okay, guy, you know, he gave me a hook. Get, get out of here. So try not to do that. But I understand, at least from uh, Joellen, and as Claire explained, is um, you're trying to get a little more information this evening on becoming a member of your county committee in, in the town where you live in. And uh, both Claire and I, our offices are uh, an integral part of that, along with the municipal clerk in the town that you live in. So if you live in Ocean County, we have 33 towns, and I'm gonna get my crib notes here. We have 412 voting districts in Ocean County. And in every one of those districts, as Claire said, some of the very small towns, uh, let's take poor Manaloking. I say poor Manaloking because if any of you have been a victim of Hurricane Sandy, you, you understand what I'm talking about. But anyway, they have one voting district, whereas Tom's River is probably up near 80 voting districts. But of those 412 in Ocean County, uh, there is a male and a female county committee person that represents each of those districts. And I think Claire told you, the population they roughly try uh, as they're creating these election districts to keep it of a, a thousand registered voters and, and in that neighborhood. So that's 824 male and female county committee people. And there is, for those of you who don't know, and it's this is both political parties, Democrat and Republican parties, um, there is a, a man and a woman for every district. And the majority of them, how they get elected to these positions is their first step is they have to pick up a petition. And a petition is available at the municipal clerk's office. That's where most of them go. It's more convenient. Um, but they are available in, in our office and we do get calls or people that stop in and we certainly explain the, the process. I put together a packet and I'm sure Claire has something similar in her office. And we'll just go over, by the way, there was a major change to the whole county committee process. It was uh, Public Law 2009, Chapter 135. Um, done in 2009. I'll go over in a little more detail what those exact changes were, but one of them were for the term of the office. It, it used to be years ago a one-year term, so a county committee people were on the ballot every single year. Then they expanded it to a two-year term. 
and under this new law that uh, took place in 2009, they left it up to the county political organizations to, they could expand the term to a four-year term. And both of the political parties in Ocean County adopt, changed their bylaws, and amended them, and they're now four-year terms. So our county committee in Ocean County for both political parties uh, were elected in 2010, and the next time they'll be on the ballot is next year, 2014. They run in the June primary. The filing deadline to get these petitions in to the municipal clerk's office is always in April. And uh, if you were on the ballot this year, the filing deadline to submit petitions is April 1st, believe it or not. No April Fools there. And the number of, so there's a lot of requirements on the petition. One, you have to be a registered voter in the district that you're going to represent, and you have to be a registered member of the political party you're going to represent. So if you're running for Bale County Committee in District 1 in Jackson, you, and for the Republican, you have to be a registered Republican, you have to live in that district. Uh, you meet those qualifications, then there's a signature schedule of how many signatures you need. It's not many at all. In some towns, it's just one signature, and the candidate is allowed to sign his own petition. So, one signature, and, and you can get on. Some, it, it could, 10 is the limit, the max. The max you would need is 10. In any time you're running for office, as Claire would tell you, as a candidate, you always want to get more than what you need for many reasons. One is in case someone would challenge you that you know you're comfortable enough in case somebody tells you they're a registered voter and they sign it and it turns out they're not, that signature, if your challenge, could be kicked off your petition. Two, it makes a big statement about your candidacy. If you put in a petition with one signature and it's yours, it doesn't make you appear to be a very overwhelming candidate. Um, you, you have to go to a notary public, you have to take in, there's an oath page in the back of the petition that, that the candidate has to sign, and there's a circulator slot. So if you, you don't have to sign your petition, you don't have to circulate your petition, but the circulator has to live in that district. They have to be a registered voter, and they have to sign in the back and have that notarized. So there are details that, that you have to take care of. Uh, what goes on, and a lot of times Claire mentioned, suppose you, you find out in your district someone's been the county committee man or woman for 60 years, but nobody's ever seen them. They don't know who they are. The, uh, I like to think of the term, I, I'm sure Claire probably was a county committee person one time in her background, as I, as I was. And you, you're, you're the ambassador for that district. And if you're representing the Republican Party, it's your job in that district to go to everybody, meet them, welcome them to the neighborhood, make sure they're registered to vote, um, have them come to meetings like this, and then as Claire said, you have important jobs for choosing vacancies that come up for freehold or, or other higher offices. I'm getting a, a wave here. Question, uh, just how would you know if they're active or not? Um, well, you wouldn't, when, it depends on what you mean by, if you mean how would you know whether they're registered, that can be found out. No, no, my committee person. How oh, know oh if, okay. If well, if you, you've never been contacted by them, you people in your neighborhood or you go to a Republican function and you never see the person, those are kind of... You know, ideas. You never gotten a call to to do door to door campaigning or to go to a rally or um, you know anything like that. It's, it's, the other thing you can do, another thing you can simply do is check with your local chairman. Your local chairman knows if all his seats are filled, and in many of the districts, there's no one that's a district leader. In others, there'll be there'll be lots of people that want that job. So if you check with your local chair, they'll tell you, well, we have a vacancy in this district. What one do you live in? Well, we have somebody already, but they're not active, maybe. They'll, we can get them to step down. But remember, even when it's, and Monmouth County has a county committee every two years. So it's the even years. That'll be next year, county committee. It'll be an opportunity. But remember, too, that anytime today, tomorrow, 
if um, you have vacancies in your town in, and your chairman can tell you, or your or my my election board of elections office can tell you if there, if there are vacancies or not, your chairman can have their county committee meet and then they elect you right there at a meeting and they send the word in to us and we put you on the list. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, just have to run during the election, you can be appointed when there's a vacancy yeah, by your before. other yeah. county yeah. committee. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've been here. With the um, Tea Party very active, would it, would it be advisable for a third party committee seat or no? Can you repeat so the question? Stand up. If you're not involved with the Republican or the Democrat Party, can you apply for that? No. Can you apply for that position as a Tea Party member? Independent. If you are a registered political party, but you're 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 running if you're running as a Democrat or a Republican in any election, you have to be county committee in that party. Yeah. Well, so yeah, no, in other words, what she's saying is, if if there was a third party started a Tea Party party, we would have two people representing that group. Yeah, I believe, and though because I don't have this statue in front of me, neither one of us, thank God, are lawyers. Um, <laughs> but um, so don't you know take this verbatim. I believe under New Jersey law, for a political party to be quote unquote recognized as the two major parties are, they have to uh, get a certain percentage of the vote. Now, I don't know whether it's in a state legislative year, as we're in now, when our state legislature is up. And if you garner, I don't know whether it's 10, 5, 5%, thank you, um, then you would have an apparatus that is looked at as comparable to the two major uh, political parties and you can begin a, a structure uh, where you'd have county committee. But if you, um, you know, someone in here has leanings or thoughts that they want to shake up the Democrat or Republican Party, um, there, there is nothing to forbid you other than you have to on your petition, if you run on the ballot, you have to state that you are a member of that party and registered that way. But if you don't get the support, we, we kind of left out the process, and, and it is different in, in the various counties, but um, they in, in our county we have uh, screening committees within the municipalities, and you have municipal chairs, both parties have those, they're elected by the committee people, and they we, we have slips that go with the petitions that are filed, authored by the chairs of the entire party in the county that say, this county has met the approval of the uh, municipal um, organization of Town X, and therefore they want to be affiliated with all of the other candidates that have the slogan, regular Republican organization of Blank County, regular Democratic organization, and it guides us as to where to place them on the ballot. But, as Claire said, if you are, you lean towards the Republican philosophy, but you don't believe it it fulfills everything you think it should, or the person representing the party at the county committee level, you can certainly file a petition. You will then appear adjacent to the incumbent a person on the ballot with a slogan that you choose, and you choose that when you file your petition. You're limited to six words for the primary, and uh, you can be on the ballot in you know in a primary and. Uh, it would be up to the, the voters in that primary to who they would select for the, the individual. Now, um, another way to maybe be, um, to get a start in your town, um, and a way to get active, you have to, um, you have to look around at your neighborhood. You have to get to know your neighbors. And a good way to get to know your neighbors is to ask the Board of Elections in my county, Monmouth County, the Board of Elections hires people to work elections and they get paid $200 for the day, and um, they get, as a, count, as a board, election board person in their own neighborhood, they get to see all the voters that come in. Everybody gets to know you. Uh, you get to know your neighbors. If you then decide you want to be a district leader, you already know who the voters are in your district. It's a big help to do that. Another thing you can do is you can be a challenger. And a challenger is, um, uh, uh, is um, 
someone that a candidate names as representing them on election day and they sit by the election board, they can't interfere with the process, but they keep track of the people that come to vote. And when I was a challenger, or when I was an election board, when I was a challenger, I would write down who came to vote and I would write down what time they came to vote. And we'd keep this information uh, so that every election we could look back and we could say, well, so-and-so usually comes in this time. Now, I know they're a good person that believes the way I believe. Um, I'm going to call them, or you hand, it, they hand the note to your party, and they, they call from some uh, phone bank and remind the person to get out and vote. Um, I can tell you that every single group that I've ever talked to, and it could be this group right here today, on Election Day, the month before Election Day, even a presidential year, there'll be somebody in every group that will be ill on election day. There'll be somebody who had an unplanned uh, trip for work and they're out of state. There'll be somebody who thought they had enough time and got to the polls too late. Don't let that ever be you. I'm sure it wouldn't be anybody in this room and certainly no one intentionally, but remember um, you can always vote in our offices, in our clerk of elections office, as early as the ballot is printed, you can walk in and vote. Now, we all remember last year with the storm, there were directives that advertised the fact you can walk into our offices and vote. Well, a lot of people never realized they could do that before, and we had thousands of people in Mammoth and Ocean that were um, certainly uh, displaced because of the storm. We had more probably Mammoth and Ocean than any place in the state. And when they heard that they could go to our offices, they did. And the line might have been around the corner, but we made sure we took care of those thousands of people. Even their polling place might have disappeared in, in a, on a big wave. So, um, you know, that's another story, of the story of uh, the election from hell. I can tell you that. But we worked hard to make sure that there were more and more ways for you to vote. Um, I, I can tell you that Secretary of State, um, Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadagno, was, was phoning us every day, telling us, this is another way we've gotten a directive, another way you can vote, another way you can vote, another way you can vote. So we had email and fax ballots, and we had people coming in, and we had messengers. We went, we, we, I took some workers out to the shelters so that people could vote. We got their ballots authorized one day and brought them back to the next day. It was, it was a learning experience, but I can tell you that it's a way to get to know all your voters if you locally become a volunteer. And it gives you a base so that when you run for district leader, for county committee, they, those people are all going to remember you because you greeted them at the polls. Yes. You have a question. I have a question about, um, I, I think everyone in this room probably has worked with phone banks working various candidates. Where did those names and phone numbers and addresses come from? Well, in my town, we gathered them up ourselves. We had our own list and we didn't share them with anybody. There are some lists that um, different parties uh, buy. You can buy lists. Um, email is a wonderful thing. Um, Facebook, social media. Uh, believe me, you can get the word out with just a click of, um, of your mouse and um, save yourself a fortune in mailing. But uh, it, you start someplace, you start with your club and you ask everyone to give you their, their confidential information that, and you protect it with your life. You don't let anybody use it other than what your group wants to use it for. Yeah, um, my buddy here, how long have you been in Belmar, Bill? <laughs> Since 72. Since uh, Abraham Lincoln. He's been a red, <laughs> Bill's here has been a I red saw red. him in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> right. Lincoln was a Republican. He registered as well. No, but I've been there seven years, and we have never ever been contacted by the Republican organization. We don't know anything about meetings. This is the first we ever heard of this. Right. Uh, I had to call five places to get a lawn sign for the Republican candidate for council last year. And so it's not automatic, and I don't know how, I, I don't know what the breakdown is there. Well, um, the breakdown would be at the political leadership in your town. 
Could uh, I find out who that is? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, you can know your mama. Your mama's County Belmar. Mama County Belmar. Right, Belmar. Call my election office, clerk okay. of election office, and we'll tell you who the political people are, who the chairman is, their contact um, information, and who, what county committee people are there in the district. Because we, we broke Sandy Gate, now they love us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, other, the other question is, I asked for a very simple thing, uh, and thanks to Sandy Gate, I've learned about Oprah, and I've been requesting emails. Um, ad nauseum, and they've been getting in the papers, and Sandy Gates keeps getting bigger, thanks to Oprah. Uh, I just needed the uh, the map of our districts, and I had to Oprah request it for a moment. You shouldn't have to. They asked me to. I had to do an actual... Right, well, you know, when it comes to something like that, call me. Go to visitmamas.com. All my forms, all my information, all the voter information, as far as forms, if you, for instance, a lot of people don't realize that they might have been uh, young and misguided, and they voted Democrat once in their lives. Um, and then they forget about it. And years later, they, they've been, uh, they, they think of themselves as unaffiliated. Like, I'm, I'm really, I vote for the person. And then they go to vote in a Republican primary and say they're a Republican and say, sorry, we, we have you down as a Democrat. And they'll argue until they, all of a sudden they realize, yeah, one time I guess I did go wrong. Um, and um, they um, they don't realize that for the first time within just within the last few years, you can become a virgin again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Doris Day. <laughs> Doris Day became a virgin again. You can actually whatever party you were before, you can become unaffiliated if that's your preference. You can then change your party if you want. You're free to do that. In the past, just just voting one way once. You were that way forever. So that's, I think that's a fair thing. That's a good thing. Do you have your contact information? Uh, well, uh, uh, I'll, I gave my business card to him, to John. Hi, Robert. Uh, but well, you're you online. Visit, 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 visit mammoth.com, visit and you'll see all, all my No, I'll contact you for that. Okay, okay. Thanks, we have to. Another thing, too, is the political chairman um, of any party has all that information, too. And, it, and, you know, the county chairman should really be looking to towns and saying, what can I do? the people in, in in this town. What can I do for that town? They often do go visit towns with small groups and get something started. Sometimes you need a little financial help to get started. And sometimes the county party can help you with that too. A lot of the information that a county committee lists and the current members, elected officials, uh, they're all on both our websites. And OceanCountyClerk.com for those of you in, in Ocean. Please come to our website early and often. Uh, two other points a little off of elections, just you need to know about our, our office, both of our offices, is that we actually produce money that isn't tax revenue out of our offices. It's a very unique office. All the documents, the deeds, the mortgages, the land records associated with all of your properties, are record, we're the record keepers, are recorded in our offices, and we are the, the person responsible to maintain the integrity of those records. With those come user fees that we charge to produce this. But, for instance, in my office, it's about a $2.5 million operation to pay the salaries to keep the place going. But in a bad, awful, miserable economic year, we gave $10 million back to the county for property tax relief from the fees that we charge our customers that get those documents recorded. So it's a unique story that we run efficient offices. They're all computerized. The young lady over here began a system that is unique in the nation that started up an opportunity for 14 counties in, in our state out of the 21 to do electronic recording of these documents because we both learned how to do more with less. That's our whole life. As people have retired, we're not replacing them. We now have the technology that can deal with the volume of work with fewer people on our payrolls. And it's, it's a great story. It speeds up the whole process. So things are recorded quickly. Closings take place on a quicker scale. So that's, that's a story that, that needs to be told. Finally, are there any veterans here? 
Well, if you don't know, first of all, thank you for your service. Last year, Governor Christie signed into law a bill that allows all the 21 county clerks, if you come into our office with your honorable discharge paper, we will scan it so we have it permanently. We're like a safe deposit box for you. And if, God forbid, you ever lose that document, you can come back to our office and get a certified copy of it no charge at all, because if any of you have ever dealt with a lot of veterans, different things, unfortunately, burials or a lot of tax relief, they ask for this document, and we have it on record then for you. And we give you a beautiful, nice red, white, and blue card with your photo on it that identifies the branch of service that you served in. Um, some merchants offer discounts for the card, but it's a very, we have the most veterans in the state in Ocean County. Uh, we have 68,000 veterans that reside in our county. So it's a very popular program. We have a lot of veterans come in our office every day. They're getting these DD-214 honorable discharge papers recorded. There's absolutely no charge, and you get this card. You can do the same thing in, in Monmouth County. And one final thing. If any of you are thinking of taking a trip out of the good old USA and you want to come back, you need a passport. And on Saturday, both of our offices are participating in National Passport Day, even though our wonderful federal government canceled out on it because of the sequester. But we're open in Monmouth and Ocean County, and uh, you can come to our office. Claire has a satellite office. I have a couple satellite offices. Our whole thing is we're here in this position and we tell everybody in our office we're here to serve you. And the day we wake up and we say we don't want to bother with that, I tell all my employees, we're on this side of the counter. It could be us on that other side. Just put yourselves in their shoes and the day you forget it, then look for another job because we're there. You're our bosses and we're there for you to serve you. Well, let's, yes, yes ma'am, go ahead. I'm a committee member in the Freehold Borough, and I would like to get a list of all of the people in my district, their addresses, not just Republicans, Democrats, too. How do I get that list? Each, each year, we give out an updated list just before the general election. But if you want a list, either by by um, by, dis by uh, the district list, and you want by street or by name, I'll get a copy for you. Name just give Okay, just, and that way you know who's Democrat, Republican, unaffiliated. Uh, you have a list of who's who. And if you're trying to make the most of the stops um, when you're campaigning, uh, it's a very helpful list. But just call my office and we'll be glad, glad to furnish it. And I would like to just say that this lady, when I talked to her on the phone, Joe Allen, this lady has such a smile in her voice, and she is so dedicated to the Tea Party. God bless this woman always. Yes. You will be coming back. Okay, before we take a break, thank you again, folks. Before we take a break, uh, um, how about Senator Rand Paul? Yes! Thirteen hours. What a true Tea Party patriot. Let's give him a hand. And how about well, Senator others. McLean and <laughs> Lindsey Ramsey? Nancy Graham. Call their office. Call Senator Rand Paul tomorrow. I've already done that. And call McLean or McLean or whatever his name is. See, I don't even I don't care what his name is any longer. McDemocrat. McDemocrat. And call <laughs> Lindsey. And let them know they didn't do us any favors. No. They absolutely did not do us any favors. Once again, the Republicans eat their own. And we have to stop that. And if we get vocal with them, maybe they'll listen. 
But again, right on uh, Rand Paul. Um, after the break, anybody who has any announcements, we have quite a few people who are going to be advocating something. So I'd like anybody who has something that they'd like to stand up for, you're going to have the microphone. We are going to hear from the individuals who went to the gun rally. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw their pictures. They were great. Uh, we, we had the St. Patrick's Parade in Belmar. Again, a big hit. We had a good turnout, but the Memorial Day Parade is coming up. So it'll be a nice day. Hopefully it'll be warmer. And we'd like to get more people participating. The great thing about the St. Patrick's Day Parade, Rob put it out that all the tea parties in New Jersey were invited. So we had some members from Jersey City, which, which I have to share this with you. We had a lot of applause, but again, we had the usual um, ignorant remarks, including one lady who yelled out, you're a bunch of racists. In our party, two black men, right? Walking with us. Well, that proves it. There's only two. Right. Come on. There you go. You there should you have had a dozen. Right. Oh, shame on you. We, we couldn't pay them enough money to come in. <laughs> but it was, we had, again, a good, a good response to the Tea Party, which says a lot. Um, one thing before we have our break, I want you to look around this room. I see people missing. I know there are people missing. We need to start building this group up. We need to be a good, strong, vibrant group. So every month I'm going to be pushing this. Please bring somebody new, especially a young person. In the tea party, we had a young lady, 16 years old. By the way, her name was Hope. Can you get any better than that? But we need the youth, so please try to bring somebody new next month. But also bring back the people that we see. We see a lot. I see a lot of people who are missing. So, okay, let's take a break. Oh, one more thing. Scott and Claire were kind enough. They brought up some handouts, so I have them scattered around the room. So help yourselves to them, okay? People who want to announce something that we're going to start the meeting again. But please, uh, if you can, contribute to the cause here. So, um, we already spoke about the great Rand Paul. How about uh, Chris Christie? Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, he's still better than Corzine, but you know what? Not much. That's not saying anything. Uh, we, 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 we need to remind him that he ran as a Republican. And uh, I don't know, there's a couple of things that he's been doing that don't seem too Republican or conservative to me. Um, anybody read anything more about Menendez? They deny it. He denies everything. But what about the media? Have they been reporting anything? Anybody? Is anybody here writing any letters or making any phone calls? Yes. To the media? Steve? Why don't you tell us what you're doing? Well, I just call up every time I hear somebody. They're all on speed dial. So, yes, today I called our senators, told them how lame they were. And, of course, I uh, did thank Rand Paul and did appreciate what he was doing, and hopefully I'll get a chance to vote for him in the future on a, another election once he leaves Kentucky. Woo! But, uh, you know, you got to be on the phone with these guys all the time. So when they call and say, you know, would you like to leave a message? I say, oh, yeah, I'm here. You ready? And uh, then they say, would you, would you like to leave my name? And I said, yeah, you already know where I live. Just check the file. So they know who you are, especially when you're, you're calling them all the time. I'm on a first name basis with most of Mr. Smith's uh, staff, so they know. Uh, they, they will call you back occasionally. Usually the, the answer is, uh, I'm not the staff member that handles this topic. Let me get somebody else. Because uh, usually the people that answer the phone don't know, well, where does Mr. Smith stand on this issue? And they you know, usually say, I, I really don't know. Well, can you find somebody who does? 
Because otherwise, we're just talking to them, and they'll leave a message, and it's kind of like leaving a message with a 13-year-old. Yeah. Not... <laughs> so you need to talk to the right person, and if they're not going to give you an answer, then ask for somebody to call you back. Thank you, Steve. Steve is a pro at this, so if anybody needs any advice or encouragement, Steve will help you out. Um, John Kerry, how about him overseas telling us Americans have the right to be stupid? He's the leader. He's a spokesperson. Okay, I tell you these. I bring up Menendez. I bring up Chris Christie. I bring up Kerry to get your blood going. I do. I want you to get aggravated. I want you to get annoyed. I want you to tell your friends. Your family. I want them to, because how many people do you really th not think know that John Kerry went overseas and told foreigners Americans had the right? Because do you think NBC or MSLSD or any of those shows, any of those uh, networks actually reported that? No. So no. I tell you, Government I'm sorry. Control. It was right because we were stupid well, for yeah. letting that guy get in. You're right. You're right there. But the, but the point I'm trying to make, we can't depend on the uh, media that we have. So I'm, I'm reminding you of these things so that you get aggravated enough that you're at coffee with your friends and you tell your friends and maybe a light goes on and you say, you know what, we have a tea party meeting. Come and join us. Okay? Are we going to rally? Against the media, weren't we talking about? We were that? talking about that. Um, Don, thank uh, Don. Uh, actually, later on, if you can all say a prayer for Don. He did have surgery. He's doing okay, but just keep him in your prayers. He did call Steve Lonigan's office. Um, Mr. Lonigan right now is keeping his distance. We don't know the reason why. Dan and I and uh, uh, Don will try to arrange a meeting with Mr. Lonigan. But we'd like to join up with Steve Lonigan to get that going. Dan? There's a, uh, we're planning a rally. Uh, several uh, uh, groups from around the state are, are planning a rally for the uh, afternoon of Sunday, April 14th. And right now we're looking at possibly Belmar because it was a big rally there four years ago. It'll be like a four year reunion for right. area groups. I was there. Right. I was in Trenton, but we're, that's what we're working on right now. So. That's the next thing. John, Dan will keep you informed on that, but listen, if we get that rally going, April 14th, you need to be there. It can't just be a few, okay? Um, John, and then anybody who has an announcement or anything they want to talk about, we have till 8 o'clock. Come up here, and, and so I'd like to have the people who, were, who attended the gun rally to come up after John. John? Yeah, uh, all those things that you said about what those different people said, did anybody hear one Democrat come out and condemn them? No. No. Just what you were saying about McCain and uh, Brown, as you we call them, they had to come out and say something. Right. You know? they, as you say, they, Republicans are so stupid, they eat their own. Right. Yeah. Circle of okay. Dorothy. Okay. Dorothy? You mean Ben? <laughs> well, Surrender Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Of course. Yeah. I've already seen it a hundred times. Guy right. Use the microphone. Okay. 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 On um, February 13th. 2013, the New Jersey Second Amendment Society invited its members and guests to attend the Assembly, Law, and Public Safety Committee meeting in Trenton, New Jersey. There were about 10 buses that came th uh, throughout the New Jersey, just of the Second Amendment people. Um, we were invited to address and comment on 24 bills that had to do with uh, gun control. And there were, uh, in, the, in the room, we had about 200 seats that quickly filled up. I was fortunate, fortunate enough to get one of the last seats. And uh, there was another, another room where they could watch it on closed-circuit TV, but even that 
wasn't enough uh, for a lot of people weren't able to participate because we had so, uh, so many. And then we had a gun rally on the 8th prior to that with about 1,300 people Woo! there outside in the rain. Thank you some really great speeches. That video I filmed is on our YouTube channel if you look at it. It's two and a half hours long. Some great people were speaking at that rally. You'll enjoy watching that video. Exactly. It, it was a fa two fantastic days, I have to say. Um, I sat through the testimonies, and uh, there were people from the NRA, well, certainly from the Second Amendment people, uh, the New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Group, uh, the New Jersey Sportsmen, and among many others. And then on the other side, there were the uh, Million Moms March, and I think a group called uh, Ceasefire that got up and, of course, um, gave us the usual, you know, uh, no, uh, about not having guns. And some of the, uh, some of the uh, legislation that we were looking at that they want to ban would be, they want to prohibit possession of ammunition capable of penetrating body armor. They want to establish a 180-day prohibition on purchase of handgun for certain individuals who fail to report loss or theft of firearms. Um, also, uh, just uh, just going to pick a few here. Um, they want to disqualify persons named on the federal terrorist watch list from obtaining firearms identification card or permit to purchase handgun, which was a very hot topic because it's very easy to get on the terrorist list and almost impossible to get off. <laughs> so that was uh, something that, we, that really caused a lot of uh, uh, debate. <laughs> uh, and, then, uh, and then just, you know, just to wrap up, um, you know, they said none of these laws really prevent crime. Uh, New Jersey has the strictest gun laws in the country and we are one of the most violent states. Right. So they, what, they, what they said was, let's work together. It's not, the, it's not uh, uh, controlling guns that's going to uh, solve the problem. It's stopping the violence. And nobody was addressing that. They weren't even talking about penalties for, fel for, for, the, uh, for criminals. So uh, it was an excellent day, and I'm very happy I went. We're Bob and Betty Bailey and John Lawson. We're we all went to the gun rally. Dan was there. Dan too. was there too. We saw the mic. Speak up into the mic. And um, anyway, my nice, it was a very cold. Well, it was cold, rainy day. It was a miserable day. Uh, anyway, we all went there and um, participated. The um, but she said there's like 1,300, but the papers all say 300. Every paper you look at said 300. It's like the pro life. Yes. Was, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there was great speakers, like she said. Um, Into the mic. Uh, one thing to note is that Chris Christie was a, was supposed to speak there, and he couldn't. At the last second, he had a, a change of plans. But he did speak on Letterman that week. <laughs> and he <laughs> sat next to Michelle at dinner. Which was very nice. Uh, we were there, uh, well, Betty and I, we were, um, we had our pictures taken by the Associated Press. And, uh, you were in quite a few photos. Yes, really. they were. They well, were all over the place. But the, uh, we were San Francisco, Houston, you name it, we were all over the country. Awesome. They, yes, they, picked, uh, they were. Wow. So, uh, and, um, I don't know, what did they say? Go ahead say this. Well, my sign said, you're in good hands with Smith & Wesson, perfect together. <laughs> His sign said he was with you, right? He was That's there. right. Guns don't, was kill, guns don't kill, criminals do. Yeah. So, anyway, it was, it, it, was a good, it was a good day. It was a lot of, um, um, it was fun, but it was... It was cold. It was nasty uh, out there. Um, what happened then? Well, as far as the gun laws, all gun laws passed in the assembly, mostly on party lines. These bills still have to be voted on in the Senate, and if approved, forwarded on to Governor Christie for a signature. So get out there and make your phone calls to your state senators. Um, each. And uh, I know we already made our phone call. Senator Thompson's our state senator, so um, but he's on our side. 
And just to let you know that all the gun laws did pass and put your gun permit in. Yeah, and in the assembly, and now it goes on to the Senate, and then on to the governor. Sure. So, see what happens. Yes. Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, I am moving this along because, hold on, I'm moving this along because we can only be here till 8 o'clock, karaoke, you're welcome to go over there at 8 o'clock, but Andy needs to speak. Okay. I'll be real quick, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Joellen. Um, off topic, but is anybody a committee person from Monmouth County here? Okay, uh, get, get uh, in touch with me, I'm going to organize a walkout on Governor Christie. Woo! When he gets up there. So give me a call. Uh, we had uh, Leanne Ballou and myself had rallies uh, at my church in Farmingdale. If you go out the, the uh, driveway, make a left, go over 547 and go about a mile and a half. You pass Powell High School on your left, and then there's a big brand new church on your right. That's uh, Cross Point Church. That's the church I go to. Anybody here been to the rallies we were at? All right, they're really, really good. And um, I was in charge of booking people, Leanne was in charge of a few other things, and she came up to me and said, I have Reverend Kraft, he's going to come to our last rally. And I said, Leanne, I don't have any, any room left in the program. She goes, don't you know who Reverend Kraft is? I said, no, I never heard of him. She goes, just make time for him. So I made a little bit of time for him. He brought the house down. Little black minister from New Jersey, he is so pro-rights so pro-constitution. I made friends with him. Long story short, he's going to be speaking back at the church. If you don't have a, a flyer when I'm through here, just raise your hand and get you one. He's going to be speaking a week from tonight, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. You do not want to miss this. He's reviving the Black Robe Regiment. I don't really know what that is, folks. I do. Okay, some do. of you do. He described it like this. Back at the, rev at the revolution, the ministers all got together. They wore black robes, long black robes, and underneath they had their guns. <laughs> you, I, I promise you, if you go and you are thrilled with going, next time we meet here, I'll buy you a burger, all right? <laughs> so thank you. I know you're short on time. If you need a flyer, raise your hand. I'll get you one. Thank you. Speaking of men with integrity, Dr. Ben Carson. <laughs> It's not often I'm called a gentleman, but this is just the beginning. That may change. At any rate, I just have a little technique um, that I've used for several years. When they begin talking about um, contacting local people, your state senator, your state assembly people. Uh, Tip O'Neill said years and years ago, uh, all politics is local. We have a uh, buffoon in our town, we've mentioned it before, in Belmont. Now this person has run for state level office. Um, bounced back, that's why we have them. But the, the lowest people are really the, the makings of what's coming up. If we can't stop this guy in his tracks, God knows he'll be down in Trenton in a couple of years. One thing that I have found very interesting, if not helpful, I don't know if it's helpful. You go to these people's office, our Repo I live in Belmont, of course, and our Republican office is right here in 34. You go there, you get to know these people. You are very charming with these people. Um, the secretaries, the, the chief of staffs, uh, you email them often with things that are coming. Um, um, Jason Shimenti uh, used to be uh, Representative Keene's assistant. And any time I saw the mayor's picture in the Irish Echo, which is sent all over the country, they had big write-ups on the mayor of Belmore with his nice fancy big shirt, big jacket that Christie could have fitted in. The two of them were there. And his had police written on it. And, you know, there's a lot, and this went to the whole country, to the Irish American community. These people have ambitions, and it's not just going to be, you know, the little, the little fish in the fishbowl called Belmont. They, they have to be stopped. They have to be stopped in their tracks. Also, again, getting back to these people, when there's envelopes to be licked, which they used to think. They used to have like rollers of things that came with sponges and do all these kinds of things that they find helpful. 
When that little Republican office there in Route 34 needs help, my name is on the top of the list. I make time for them. Then when I want to go in and tell them about this, this, that, or the other thing, I don't write a letter. I just sit down and talk to them about what's happening. Just a little idea for people who have time. Be a face. Be a help. I say, <laughs> I once said I'd lick glue, smoke glue, <laughs> whatever, whatever, sniff glue rather, whatever it's going to do to help us get the party working, I'll do with them. And I have. I've done a lot of, not sniffing glue, but we've done a lot of good things that uh, have helped them. And now remember it. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. At our December meeting, we did a collection for the Sandy victims. We did gift cards and donations. Okay. Um, I delivered all of those goods to Union Beach, to the police department, where all the distribution was happening. I have a thank you card that I'd like to read from um, Kathy Parcells, who accepted our donations. Just a short note to say thank you for your generous donation to our townspeoples. Just wanted you to know that with your donations and many others from all around the state, we have helped 32 families in Union Beach. Just wanted to send you a heartfelt big thank you. God bless you all. It warms my heart to know that people really do care. We still do have hope that everyone will be made whole again. Thank you, Kathy Parcells. Congratulations to everyone who made a donation. See, I, I hope you all noticing that there are people in this group that really do put out a lot of time. Denise is one of them. Jim Lewis is another. Jim, I'd like you to take a stand, please. First party, there's a lot of work. Bob and Jason, Bob and Jason, will you stand up? Bob does a lot of work, but I mean, we're after it because of Bob and Jason. So, um, Dan, Steve, I mean, these, these people have made this club what it is. Dennis, Dennis would like to come up and speak. For all of you who don't know me, I'm Dennis Knight. Uh, I'm a uh, veteran, uh, 20 years in the Army. And if you don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on in Washington uh, nationwide about Tea Party being insurgents, being the enemy of the state. Um, there's a colonel out at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. For all of you who don't know what Fort Leavenworth is, that is the, uh, one of the premier schools for U.S. Army officers to attend and get training in the art of war, the science of warfare. And this colonel wrote a book or a white paper, a pamphlet, uh, talking about homegrown insurgents, uh, enemies of the state. Uh, one of those enemies are Tea Party people, members of the NRA. Um, right to life. Right to life. Anybody who has anything to say against the government is an enemy of the state. Which is, you know, as you well know, that's not what the U.S. is about. That's not what we're about. Um, there's a group called Oath Keepers. Um, how many people have heard that? Okay. Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers is a group of law enforcement, active law enforcement officers active duty military uh, veterans um, that have taken an oath to uphold the Constitution and not fire on the American people. This colonel basically says it's okay to fire on American people if we're protesting the government. So what Oath Keepers is doing, and you can go to their website, it's oathkeepers.org. Um, they're taking a donation to put a, a billboard outside the front gate of Fort Leavenworth. Stating this, uh, Colonel, and let me read it to you, Colonel Redcoat Benson, that's his name, the Tea Party is not the enemy. Soldiers, honor your oath, refuse to fire on Americans. So if you feel strongly about this, go to the Oath Keepers website, 
and you know, a modest donation, five, ten dollars, whatever you can afford, uh, to help get this bull, uh, billboard up there. So all the officers leaving and all the soldiers leaving Fort Leavenworth at the end of the day can see this. It's important. Otherwise, we're going to have these people actually uh, making us the enemy of the state, the NRA, the right to life, folks like that. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. We're doing good. I'm just trying to push it before 8 o'clock, although Rob says we have plenty of time. But Basil would like to come up and speak, and then the good reverend. And, okay, Joe and John. Thank you, Joellen and Dan. It's nice to be here with everybody, my fellow patriots. I'm the New Jersey director of the American Citizens Lobbyist Group. We're a new group. What we do is we lobby our representatives, citizens lobbyists. Every week we have an issues flyer that we bring to our representatives, right to their office. We hand it to either if they're in the office or their representatives. Like this gentleman said, you have to be engaged. You have to be present. Emails, they erase. They delete. A lot of times they don't even look at the emails. So we have to make sure to get it in their hands. So we deliver this issues flyer every week, and we make a nice relationship between the citizen and the representative. It's very important that you get to know who your representatives are. And, and hold their feet to the fire. That's the key. Let them know we know what's happening. This is the bill that's coming up. We know what's happening. We want you either to vote for it or not to vote for it. You don't, you don't discuss anything. You just deliver the flyer. That's all you have to do. You bring it to the office. If they want to speak to you, you want to talk to you, that's fine. But you really don't have to say anything. You just have to deliver it to their office. Um, my representative, somebody said uh, Senator Thompson was their uh, senator, state senator. He's my, I'm um, District 12, he's my representative too, he's my senator. When I was there delivering the flyer two weeks ago, he, he waved me in, he saw me, I, re I introduced myself, and he, he sat me down, he said, sit down, I was speaking for about half an hour. He said, they took a poll, less than 36% of his constituents know who he is. That's, that's sad, that's really sad in our country. In our democracy, we don't, a lot of people don't even know who their representatives are. So what we have to do is we have to change that. And uh, Ron Bear started this uh, organization. He's uh, United Patriots of America. He's the founder of this organization, which was modeled uh, from an organization in um, Oklahoma. A woman, Carol Helm, started this type of uh, organization. And they, the Oklahoma is number one in states' rights because they... She's active lobbying all the representatives. They are all in one place in Oklahoma. They're in the state house. Their state representatives are all in the state house. Our representatives are, are, are throughout the whole state, so it's a lot harder to cover the territory. That's why I need a lot of people signed up, so every week they can deliver it to their representative. We have a sign-up sheet. Debbie Rizzo is back there. She's with me tonight. So please, sign up, and I'll do the rest. The only thing you have to do is deliver this to the representative. Are you going to represent both Ocean and Monmouth? We're, we're, we're the whole state. We're okay. statewide. We, we're, what our goal is to reach the 40 districts. If we can reach the 40 districts every week with a, with a, a, a field rep, we call a field rep, that's going to be phenomenal. Because a lot of these representatives are arrogant because nobody's holding their feet to the fire. They, they go and vote on a bill of special interest. Oh, vote on this. Corporations, vote on this. What about the citizens? What about us? What about our rights? What about our, our constitution? So we have to concentrate states' rights. That's the key. Let's, let's, let's focus now on states' rights, strengthen the state, and let them know we're watching. So I know time is short, but thank you for listening and sign up, and I'll, I'll, I'll do the rest. I'll, I'll notify you. I'll send you the issues flyer every week, and uh, hopefully we can, we can make a difference. Thank you for listening. Thanks. A little tease, next month you want to be here, we have somebody from Hillsdale coming. Oh, I didn't know that. Keep it secret for me. <laughs> praise the Lord, people. God, God says that we should do him praise. It doesn't, not one of these persons, not one of you would be here if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. 
I don't care what background you're from, if you're an independent, this, that, Christian, Jewish, he's the God that praises heaven and earth and everything in it. And he's the God of our Constitution. He's the indivisible God that you pledge allegiance to. And you need to know that. We went through a, a course a while back on the Constitution, not the Hillsdale, but the other one. By the way, the Hillsdale College course is being taught every Sunday at uh, uh, the, 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 the Buddy's Tavern in Sayreville. It's being taught at 2 o'clock in Buddy's Tavern in the back row. So if you want to find out about FDR and how liberal he was, about uh, uh, Johnson, who I voted for, don't boo me now. <laughs> I, was, I was a Democrat for a while, all right, until my boss got up to me and said, you ought to be a problem of what you believe in. He changed me. So I thank God for that. That was back in the 60s. So the thing that, that I'm trying to do now is there's a Muslim law that the Supreme Court said they could use in our courts. You know that. Sure you law. It says Christians get their hands cut off and their heads cut off. You know that. No, I bet you none of these knew that. A very few of these knew that. Their law says there's 109 laws, which I brought to Christie. I was down there in the Second Amendment. I was down there with it and I spoke. How many seen a, a video where there was a priest there with a ashes on his head and was speaking? I was sitting right next to him. And then for some reason, I, I'm not on a video though. But I spoke too, you know, because God says you got the right to bear arms, and I'm going to stand for that. He, he told Israel, beat your uh, plowshares into instruments of, of death or war. So God's behind it when, when we're attacked. We don't have the right to murder anyone. Reverend, yeah. do you have a, a petition to sign? Oh, yeah. I got, I got a petition to get us out of Muslim law. I'm sorry. He's sorry. got a petition. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. We, have, we have so little time. Go ahead. Thank you. The Reverend does have a petition to sign. I'm going to put it in the back table there. And he also is selling... Um, Magnetic flags. Uh, he's selling flags, uh, bumper stickers. So he's sitting back there. Please see him. Joe Mellon, and then Joe. Mellon, what would you petition for? To prevent sh Sharia law from becoming used right. in... Uh, to prevent the Shari Sharia law to take effect in our government. My name is Joe Patechnik. Uh, a little while ago, Dan asked if I would uh, find out if the Central Jersey Rifle and Pistol Club could do anything for the Tea Party. And uh, I did ask at the general meeting, and I said, no, they, ha they already have a, it's cost prohibitive for them. And they said, some of these events go $30,000 to hold. What we have here are some flyers. There are, for those interested in learning anything about weapons, from almost any category of people, they have days for you, they have programs for you. And as I find out about them, I'm going to bring them here. One of them right now, this one, I have some flyers I'll leave in the back table. May 11th, limited to 60 people, family. Any family, bring the whole family. That's what they advertise. Uh, they will have one person per shooter. They will train safety. If you've ever been through a ranges, safety is paramount. You get kicked out of membership for violating any safety. And they don't, they don't fool around. They get challenged by anyone. The... Uh, programs there to teach the young people how to shoot. This case it's 10 to 18 years old. So you can attend that. It's May 11. And you'd have to just call and register. There's other programs I will come in in the future. The young ladies, there's young lady shooters that are just females. There are teams out there. They're looking to sponsor the young ladies to go out to national competition. And they're looking to get to be number one in the country. And they're number three right now. That's there. If you're interested, you can see me. I'll help guide you through that. There are other programs that will come about in the future, so you're welcome to them. If you've never fired a gun, you want to know, if you're one of the ladies here, you can go in on Ladies' Day. 
that will give you uh, training, classroom training, and individual instructor training. The only male you count that you, uh, you'll have contact with will be the guy helping you shoot if they can't get enough ladies uh, to help guide you. So it's a it's a good program, and uh, I'll bring them up as we come along. So I'm leaving them right here. Thank you. Uh, I don't think Joe Biden will be invited with his shotgun. <laughs> I don't think I'll need the uh, microphone. Just wanted to say that last uh, meeting. Get camera range. Last, last meeting we had a, uh, a presentation on a fair tax, Dave Corsi. Uh, that was the second one that we had given this particular tea party. Uh, We've been called back to a couple of them now, and what we're doing uh, after we do the second one around, and I've requested to Dan, is that uh, I we would like the uh, East Jersey Tea Party to consider a resolution saying that you support the fair tax. Now, I, I put one on each table. I'm not sure exactly how uh, you want to do it, uh, but uh, I would certainly like you to consider it. And I don't know if it's brought up to the executive board or have the members vote or exactly what to do it. But I certainly like everybody to consider it. And that's why I put one on each table. Uh, I, had, I brought in about a dozen with me now. So uh, just like you to, this is the time now. Uh, tax reform is probably going to take place this year. The fair tax is a bill that's already been written. When you hear people talk about some of the others, like a flat tax, Nothing's been written. I mean, there is one bill, 15 page. It has about a dozen co-sponsors. Our bill has 62 now in the House of Representatives and eight in the Senate. So uh, we think it's time to not just to say, yeah, we like the fair tax. It's time to maybe step up. And we're asking now the Tea Parties if they would consider uh, drafting a resolution. Well, not drafting it. We've already drafted it. But instead of voting on it. And that's why I pass them out. So you, you, like, if you decide that you're going to uh, do it, uh, you have an idea what we're looking at. So if there's one at your table, if you haven't gotten it, uh, look at it. Maybe uh, it will be brought up on the website. But certainly we would like you to consider that, okay? Thank you very much. I know there was a conversation earlier about the press. and. I just want to say, I mean, I grew up in New Jersey, but um, my friend Bill and I have been involved in exposing the corruption uh, in our own local government. And if it weren't for the press, and I have to, I have to say, we have to treat them all differently. Uh, in this case, it was the person assigned to Bill Maher, uh, and his name is Jarrett Renshaw, and he is a writer for um, the uh, North Star Ledger. And if it weren't for Jarrett, taking the time to help us and to do all of the investigative reporting and then give it to its editors, get all the attorneys for the paper, because it was pretty scathing. Sandy Gate is not over Sandy Gate. This whole thing about Ash Britt and everything and everybody involved is going to go on for many, many months to come. Can you tell us about it? Well, I don't, there's not enough time. Yeah, all you have to do is go online, any search engine, put in Ash Britt, Belmar. put in Belmar, Ash Britt is A-S-H-B-R-I-T-T, put in Mayor Doherty, D-O-H-E-R-T-Y, and his wife Maggie Moran, and you will get about 10 pages of press that tells the truth about Belmar and Christie and a whole bunch of other people. And it's not over. It's just the beginning. And Jar and I, I feel comfortable. Jared just had a little baby girl, and he took the time to speak with me the other day because I over-requested all of Maggie's emails uh, to the League of Municipality because Maggie could not have sold Ash Britt and all these contracts without a contact at the League of, Munici Munici League of Municipalities, which, of course, her husband gladly gave her. There's a lot going on, and recently, in starting, in starting a, a, a group of local residents, bipartisan, to fight the corruption, two very liberal people, they're both journalists, 
The husband works for PBS. He's, he's, a, he's an award-winning journalist. He believes in global warming. I don't. But he offered, and his wife offered, to get an expose on television about what's going on in Belmar. So we need to make friends. Now I know, even the Asbury, listen, if you make the right friends, even the Asbury Park Press a week ago ran a front page article on this, they were forced to, because like, they're the only paper who didn't write about it yet. So if you make the, you, you have to feel these people out, but they're not all the same. And I wanted to say that before we go and attack everybody in the press. Uh, attack, you can attack the Asbury Press all you want. Asbury Park Press, please, you know. But everybody else, you might want to start considering. Even your local writers, they're very important. Thank you. One more, and then before you leave, please, we need to, in honor of Don, stand up and sing God Bless America. One more, quick, please, and we're out of time. Uh, last month, I, I was down at the uh, State House. I told them that what they are doing is taking guns away from people who have legal guns who don't commit crimes. What they do is, what they're doing is taking those guns away and leaving the criminals with those illegal guns like those kids that were killing. They, they, those guns were not the legal gun. That's what the problem is. And they got to stop that nonsense. And I was t uh, talking outside too, and I had, and uh, I got them, and uh, they put it on the, uh, they put me on TV too. And uh, I gave them help. Obama, that bum. Twenty dollars in the that guy jar for that. Yeah. He is doing everything against the people of the United States. All he wants to do is change this government to a communist government. He's playing that game just like the Communist Party did in Russia, just like they did in China. They just take money away from the rich. That means then we don't have any jobs. And that also means the price of everything we buy goes sky high, like the gasoline. It was $1.94 when he was first elected. Look at it now. Four or five dollars. And this is outrageous. I don't understand. People don't see these things. They, they ought to do something and wake people up. But they'll be woken up once he takes over and changes the government. Then they'll realize. Thank you.